verse is a year. The Lord is going to exalt himself in the life of believers who truly begin to live the kingdom life and do kingdom ministry. In other words, the scriptures begin to produce fruit in their life. The Lord is saying, cease from your own works. Cease from your own striving. Drop your ambitions. Your best is in your rest. Rest in, in the Lord. Rest in Him. Let Him take over. And that's why tonight we continue with First Thessalonians chapter 2. As we are continuing, we started with Ephesians 6 chapters, Philippians 4 chapters, Colossians 4 chapters, and yesterday, yesterday night, we came into First Thessalonians chapter 1, and all through the day today, now we are doing First Thessalonians chapter 2, and we're going to use it to pray on Zoom by 11 o'clock London time, right with the scriptures. We're going to pray with them one chapter, one, one verses all through, so that we pray them in, not just to the intercessors, but into all those who are saints across the world. Get ready, open gate, 2022 is going to be one of the most extraordinary events on Zoom by the grace of the Lord. The Lord is our work through the Global Executive Committee and the Planning Committee. Things are coming together. The Zoom room is big enough. In fact, we have a Zoom room with capacity for a thousand. So get people along, get your friends, get your relatives. The Zoom details are displayed in the poster. You see it all over the place. Get involved, come into the Zoom room, and let's all interact. There's going to be breakout rooms so that people can have conversations. The Lord is faithful. Let us pray now. Father in heaven, let your name be glorified. Reveal your mind to us through your word, by your spirit. Let it be made flesh in us. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. We're starting today a little bit late, but please bear with us. A whole lot of things require attention. In the first Thessalonians chapter 2, the Bible begins with Paul reminding them, he said in verse 1, For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. You know our entrance in unto you. But he said in verse 2, But even after that we had suffered before, and were shamefully entreated, as you knew at Philippi, were bold in our Elohim to speak unto you the gospel of Elohim with much contention. He said, you know, Paul said to them, you know how we came into you? In spite of what we suffered at Philippi, we came to Thessalonica. What we suffered did not damp our enthusiasm, did not take away our confidence. What we suffered did not make us to now withdraw. You know what? He said, we still brought the gospel to you in spite of all the contentions we had to go through. Verse 3, for our exhortation was not of deceit what we shared with you there was nothing crafty in it it was plain truth so it says for exhortation was not of deceit nor of uncleanness nor in guile these are three ways people can preach the gospel you can preach the gospel in deceit you can preach the gospel in uncleanness you can preach the gospel in guile and it's not sincere it's not real and you can do all that and that is what you see today in the church of men and the church of satan and the hybrid church you see this kind of deceit uncleanness or guile craftiness but he said rather verse 4 but as we are allowed of elohim to be put in trust with the gospel recognizing that it was elohim that gave us the gospel as a trust something sacred something to hold even so we speak not as pleasing men but elohim wow which tried our hearts paul was reminding them that when he came to give them the word he did it with a deep sense of responsibility. So he did it as unto the Lord. He said the truth to them. He shared it with them as unto the Lord. He didn't seek man's opinion and man's approval of men to hail him. He said he did it as unto the Lord which tried our hearts. Paul was conscious of something. Elohim is immanent. There's no barrier with him. He sees in and out. He's omnipresent. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. In the mind, in the heart, in the emotion. He knows everything. 
And so it says, Elohim tries the hearts. With what heart are you doing the work of the Lord? What is your agenda? What is your motive? What is propelling you? Why are you in ministry? Is it the stomach? Paul said there are people whose God is their belly. Is it ambition? Is it competition with other people? Is it what is driving you? Is it because somebody has built a cathedral of so so and many people you want to build a bigger one? Is it that somebody has a crowd of 200,000 you want to have 300,000? You know what? These things they are not it. These are the stuff of ABC churchianity. Attendance, building cash. If you are in that mold, you are going to do the work of the Lord deceitfully. Then he said, for in verse 5 for neither at any time use we flattering words as you know nor a cloak of covetousness elohim is witness now paul said something important because these days you see there are pastors there are leaders who cannot tell the truth to the people there are those who do not speak about sin anymore they don't speak about holiness anymore they don't speak about you know some of the deep things of the Bible, they don't speak about them anymore because they don't want people to leave the church. They don't want to offend people so that people will leave the church and then their bills are unpaid. If your motive is to retain people to pay the bills, you have all men most miserable in ministry. If the Lord sends you, he will pay your bills. If the Lord sends you, he will pay it any way he wants, through whomsoever he wants. At times it's the most unlikely, the most unusual. The Lord will raise them to become those who will use to he will use to support you. The moment you look away from Elohim, to begin to look at the faces of men, you are going to be tempted to you know modify the word. To begin to present it with flattery. You begin to tell people, God will do this for you. Amen. The Bible says, you know what? The wicked. There is no rest for the wicked. So are you telling somebody who is living in utter wickedness, you know, God will do this, God will do that, when you should be telling him that sin is toxic, it can lead to eternal damnation. Repent of your sin. How are you there and you, you're making people feel, feel comfortable? Men and brethren, don't ever come to a place where you begin to replace the gospel with flattering words to make people feel good in their emotion, feel good about you, feel good about your ministry so that they go and unlock their zip, or unlock their wallets and begin to bring money and sow into you. That's not the way to be wealthy in the ministry. Wealth of the ministry comes by faithfulness to he who called you. He who called you knows your needs. He knows more than what you need. He's able to supply all of them. He's able to decorate you. He says, seek you for the kingdom and his righteousness. All other things shall be added unto you. Added is a word of grace. In other words, your best will come from your resting in him, trusting him to provide all the allocations locations of resources you need and in this season that's one thing the Lord is challenging us the Lord is challenging every one of us understand who you are in the Lord and who is in you understand the, the, the awesomeness of your redemption it's by election the choice of the Lord is what brought you to the kingdom and Yeshua Jesus shed his blood to redeem you if he gave his life that you may live how can he not you know take care of you the lord wants us to be secure in him you know some people think oh you know apostle doesn't have any challenges he doesn't know what we're going through we have that so so and so person listen if whatever you think you've had add more whatever you think you've had add more add people who is like you know, over their dead body, you know what? We will not leave, we will not do the work of the Lord. When we got saved, anger, cola, rots, all manner of things, wickedness of extreme order. You know what? When we go to pray, we say, Lord, forgive him, for he doesn't know what he is doing. Forgive him. Lord, open his eyes. Lord, forgive him and his family. Lord, have mercy on them. That is the way of the kingdom. Nothing should take us off. And so we need to come to the place where we trust he who called us, he who sent us. We trust he who 
is able to provide all we need. So if you're a minister, you don't need to take flowery words, flowery words, flatter people to make them feel good and they are around you and after some years they get kicked in their sin. They can no longer repent. That's what flattery does to people. You flatter people, you can flatter them to hell and they think it's okay because you think it's okay. You've told them it's okay and they do not allow the Lord to fix their life. They don't allow themselves to receive the, the correction, the reproof, and all that, please, brothers and sisters, a poor book is better than secret, you know, admiration that leads to shame. Share with people. When they go wrong, correct them. Correct them. Never come to the place where you are intimidated to correct people. You are intimidated to share the truth with people. No. Always make sure you know who sends you. You see, for at no time did we use fluttering words, as you know, nor a cloak of covetousness. We didn't do anything out of covetousness, out of what we get out of it. Elohim is witness. Nor of men sought we glory. They didn't seek glory of men. He didn't seek glory of man. He knew who called him. He knew who sent him. He knew the Lord would provide. So when he goes to places like Corinth and the people are proud and arrogant, Paul will walk with his own hands to provide his needs. When he got to people like the Philippians, you know what? He will, they will give and give and give. He would, you know what, commend them and pray for them that his God will supply all their needs according to his riches in glory. There may be hundreds or thousands of people around you. At the end of the day, it's only those the Lord has ordained to support you, to bless you, to provide for you. And they will do it as unto the Lord, not unto man. They won't do it to be recognized. They won't do it to control you. They won't do it to influence you. They will do it because they received it as a ministry from the Lord. And I tell you, whatever they give you is sweet because there's no agenda attached to it. He said, no, a cloak of covetousness, Elohim is witness. Nine, number six, nor of men sought we glory. We didn't do anything to seek glory of men. You know, men and brethren, Paul was just awesome. And he commends himself to us who are in this generation that we must capture all these character traits of true kingdom ministry. He says, nor of men sought we glory. We didn't see glory of men, neither of you, nor yet of others, even when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Yeshua. Paul said it. Man, if you're an apostle, don't go to give people a long list of things to provide before you can come and minister for them in that conference. Four-star hotel, five-star hotel, first-class ticket, all kinds of things going on today. How, why should your PA go and do a business transaction with the people that invited you? Why, why can't you just, you know, say, yes, I'm going to come by the grace of the Lord? Brothers and sisters, if you're an apostle, you're an apostle of Yeshua HaMashiach. He called you. He sent you. He'll provide your bills. He'll pay your bills. Go and do his work. Stop tying it to anything you are going to get from people. It doesn't matter what you are. Stop tying what you are going to do in ministry, whether it is to an individual, to a congregation. Stop tying it to anything. I told you the story the other day, how one of great popular ministers came out of some trauma and crisis in America, and a pastor in the UK was gracious enough to invite this minister to, to be the guest speaker, and at the end gave a, you know an offering of 10,000 pounds and this preacher said no way the least you should take is 20,000 pastor said how can I provide this they've done everything they've taken care of hotels and retinue all that all the long list of things hotel tickets was class all that they done all that and gave tenters in no way they thought it was a job she cast them with a prophetic mantle and well, no matter what happened, whether it was a cause of righteous indignation or a cause with uh, agenda, with satanic thing, we don't know. But do you know within two years the church is no more, was no more scattered? What is the joy just because somebody didn't give you certain quantum of money? You wanted 30,000, you didn't get it. You got 18,000. You got angry enough. 
And so anyone that went outside the kingdom because of that scattering is on the head of that so-called preacher. Brothers and sisters, let's let's dump all these things we've borrowed from the world, all these worldly cultures. It is so important. So Paul now said in verse 7, that we were gentle among you. Even as a nurse cherished her children. Wow. Paul said we're gentle. As a nurse nursing, taking away the junk, on handling, tender, we're gentle among you as a nurse cherished her children. Verse 8. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of Elohim only, but also our own souls. Paul says we're willing, if it was possible, to take our soul and lay it down for your sake because you were dear unto us. This is ministry. This is leadership. This is one who truly was invested. He wasn't in gospel for his belly. He wasn't in it for his ego. He was there as an assignment. Yeshua said, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. And if any man will be my disciple, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. And so this Paul modeled what apostolic ministry is all about. One time I got a man of God in somewhere in the northeast of England and he contacted me, he heard of me, and he says he wants me to come and consecrate him an apostle. And then all that before you know, he began to talk about his plans, then he wear his robes and begin to accumulate number of pastors and, and accumulate them to bring their tithes to him. That was his concept of pastor as covering young man and I said to him brother it's not about that he couldn't even complete the master class you know people have all kinds of kind of wonky ideas about ministry you want people to come and bow before you and before you can do anything some people want people to pay a consultation fee before you can see the man of God before you can get a prophetic word and when a prophetic word comes you go and so to activate the word brothers and sisters the time has come when we go to take all those junk into the trash bin of history ministry is ministry ministry is dying to self ministry is just being single eyed towards the Lord and his kingdom. Ministry is trusting the Lord. He knows that you are married. He knows you have children. He knows your children are going to go to college. Don't tell me it took him by surprise. He's worked it all out. He's worked it all out. Better Let's come to trust him. So Paul told them how they were gentle among them, even as they nurse charity our children, being affectionately desirous, were willing to have imparted to you not the gospel of Elohim only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. Verse 9. For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail for laboring night and day, because we will not be chargeable unto you, we preach unto you the gospel of Elohim. So Paul reminded them that when he came to them at the first, he labored. But to share the word, he also labored to provide for his need because he didn't want anything to make anybody to miss. When you see us in Global School of Ministry, that the Lord has asked us, it's time to activate the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, the priest of all believers. And the Lord says that men and women of God have put a bad light on him. They kind of suggest he's a bad uh, a king who wants people to serve him and then people have to go and pay through their nose to attend Bible college or seminary and after that they pay through their nose to be licensed, to be commissioned, they pay through their nose to be released, to be sent. The Lord said, no, that is not the kingdom. That's religion. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you a program, keep it open, free of charge, the nations of the world that everyone who wants to discover their ministry, their calling, their gifting, who wants to serve the Lord can have opportunity to be taught, trained, equipped, activated, and released to serve the Lord. 
And so when we see what the Lord is doing all the way to the Pacific region, all the way through Asia, all the way through, you know, in the Middle East, all the way through East, North Africa, East Africa, Southern Africa, you know, the Central Africa, West Africa, all the way through Europe, North America, the Caribbean, and through Pastimilia, right there in South America, it is based on this principle that the Lord has called every brother, every sister, and our job is to facilitate that. So if you want to study by virtually, I mean by, by virtual, if you are the visual type, go to YouTube. Through Kingdom Life, you can on YouTube make do your studies and finish your program. On Facebook Live, you can be with us. Live blogging is a class that is here. Every time we minister, we are ministering part of a course. You are live blogging, you are training. Or go to the master class. We recruit about February from all over the world. People are in the classroom and the director of studies has so arranged everything. It's so beautifully laid out. You have a kingdom community and study with them. Praise the Lord. Or global school of ministry centers across the world. Praise the Lord. Or the website gsomonline.org until we create another uh, more interactive uh, site or Kingdom Books Club, download the ebook study. These things are because the Lord says we're not chargeable. Nobody should say, oh, because I couldn't afford a thousand dollars, a five thousand dollars to get my training. The training is absolutely free. Ordination is free. Licensing is free. By the other body that we're part of, International Missus Fellowship. Brothers and sisters, I want to say this to you. The Lord wants those who he calls to look up to him. He will take care of him. As we enter our rest, ministers of the gospel, stop stressing yourself about. Stop stressing yourself about how to make money, how to do this, how to do that. Get on with the work. Get on with it. If you need to take a job to provide your needs, go ahead. If you need to start a business to provide your needs, go ahead. And if you are called to full-time ministry, truly, then it will be proved by how much hours you labor in the world and in prayer. And if, blessing brothers and sisters, you say you are called to full-time ministry and prayer and study of the word and ministry, you are giving the Lord anything less than 10 to 12 hours, you are not called to full-time ministry. Not at all. Because even the people of the world, they work for eight hours. So you can't go in the morning and do a little bit and you go and laze around all day on television. No. Serve the Lord. He says, in labor and travail, laboring night and day, because will not be chargeable unto any of you, Men and brethren, the Lord is calling us to a kingdom approach to ministry. And First Thessalonians 2 challenges us. Tomorrow morning, we will continue the order from verse 10 to verse 17. And tonight, all the verses will be prayed through. With the intercessors who are present every day, every day. I remember Open Gate 2022, the Global Conference of International Missus Fellowship starts on Thursday. 5 p.m. intercessors gather to pray for one hour. Then intercessors start, uh, the, the session starts by 6 o'clock. Then 7 o'clock, IMF World Youth, you know, Summit, World Youth Forum. The first of this type, young people from across the world, they are going to order the battle according to the principle in First Kings chapter 20, verse 1 to 20. They will order the battle and the foretaste of it we got with a crossover. We also got at a rise online church with our walls on Sunday when the young people took the service. Men and brethren, this is going to be four days of glory. Prepare. Let's interact in the presence of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for how you are unpacking the Pauline epistles for us. Lord, the challenge you have released, may we not bounce it off. May we absorb it. May we allow it to transform, renew, and change us from inside out. Lord, cause us to walk in the light of your word, of your truth, by your spirit. Make us a flaming fire, burning off all chaff 
Use every minister for your glory. Thank you for destiny and for the time he spends in serving you with us. And Lord, we give you praise for him and elect and their service. Receive it and that of their siblings. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day by about 10.30 a.m. UK time and that's the same at Nigerian time and you, it's either Apostle George Monday to, Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace uh, Friday to Sunday and then in the evening of Sunday we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6 after 6 another one up to 7 so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks this course you just listened to all these lessons you know there's an ebook we have free of charge everything we do is free but more importantly you can actually do your program on you know ebooks you can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua Jesus is empowered with truth remember it is the teach train equip activate and release paradigm absolutely free of charge have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon